Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice radio. So today, I am showing you one of the dumbest cards we have ever, ever seen in the Pokemon trading card game. It is Slowpoke and Psyduck Tag Team GX. That's right. Slowpoke and Psyduck. Not Slowbro and Golduck. No, 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 no. Slowpoke and Psyduck. That, ladies and gentlemen, is weird and dumb. Okay, so with that out of the way, why has it got 250 HP? I should mention the lovely Melkor did put me in touch with a... Well, he showed me the Japanese text and I popped it into Google Translate, asked him a bunch of questions, so that dude rocks. Because he really helped me out with this. <laughs> but why has it got 250 HP? Pikachu and Zekrom has 240 HP. Mimikyu and Gengar has 240 HP. How does this have more than them? That makes no real sense. Two evolving Pokemon should not have more than a Stage 2 or a Legendary and a Basic Pokemon. Weakness to grass here is... It's not too bad, if I'm honest with you. Grass isn't a powerhouse typing at the moment, so you should be alright. Just, you know, maybe stay away from Celebi and Venusaur. Retreat cost of 2 is generally a bit annoying, but there's not much you can really do about it. And there's no resistance, because most cards don't have a resistance. And I should mention that this is a water Pokemon. Being a water Pokemon at the moment is awesome. It means that you're hitting weakness against Blacephalon, which is still going to be good after rotation. But way more importantly, Reshiram and Charizard, which is literally the best deck at the moment. Yes, we are losing Brooklet Hill, and that's a little bit sad. And yes, we're losing Aqua Patch. And that's a little bit sad. But we're still going to have the Naganado Quagsire combination for accelerating energy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is lovely. So, Melkor's helped me out with what it does. What does it actually do? Well, the first attack here, for two water energy, discard as many supporter cards from your hand as you like. This attack does 40 damage for each card discarded in this way. Now... This is weird and dumb, like all of these attacks are. I mean, look, we just got a slow poke, or slow bro, in Unbroken Bonds, which has an attack whereby you flip three coins, it does 100 for each head, but if all three of them are tails, you lose the game. Pokemon have been leaning pretty hard into these dumb attacks, especially for slow poke slash evolution cards, so maybe we shouldn't be terribly... Surprise, I think is the word I'm looking for. I mean, Mega Slowbro had an attack called Low Roll Spin. Just putting that out there. So, this attack then, it can get up to pretty good damage. I mean, look, let's say you're against something like a Reshiram and Charizard you're hitting for weakness. You need to essentially be doing 140. So, if you discard four supporter cards from your hand, you're doing 160 with the weakness, you'll get the KO. Against something like Blacephalon, 3 would do 120, 240 with weakness, there would be the KO. Only doing 2 would be 80, 160, you'd be a little bit shy. Although you could always, well, you could use something like Shrine of Punishment, but that would hurt you as well. And we've lost Choice Band, so it, it's much more difficult to add damage to attacks than it will be before we hit the rotation. And you can just stack your deck full of supporters here. Play a whole bunch of cards like Cynthia to help you draw cards. While also playing a whole bunch of stuff like Tate and Liza, which can draw cards, but can also be a switch. Or cards like Green Search, or Green's Exploration as it got translated. Which allows you to search for any cards you like if you've got no abilities on the field. Or stuff like Koga's Trap, which confuses and poisons a defending Pokemon. The point is, we've got plenty of options here for supporters, and you can just play a whole bunch of them. There is a slight issue here, and that is that you're bidding all your supporters from your hand. You, you could just legitimately run out of supporters here, and that would suck. 
or you might be in a really awkward position where you need to play that Cynthia so that you can refresh your hand ready for next turn, but you need the extra 40 damage to get a key KO, so you're in that situation of, do I take the KO, but then I've got nothing good in my hand, fingers crossed I draw off the prizes, or do you not take the KO, which will mean you've got a better hand remaining for next turn, but might then leave you behind in the prize trade, and the answer is... Depends on the game, depends on the circumstance, and even when you are in the game, you probably will never know the right answer until afterwards anyway. So it's a little bit awkward. Now, the good news is we have got ways of recovering supporters. We've got Palpad, which is not rotating out because it came out in Ultra Prism, and we've got Lusamine that is also not rotating out, and either of those will be able to do a bit more damage. I mean, Palpad puts them back into your deck, but you can essentially just use it to just put a whole bunch in your deck. And Lusamine, which is staying because of the full art in Ultra Prism, that picks up two supporters, and it goes straight to your hand. So there's a weird interaction here where you play Lusamine, pick up two supporters, but really it's not two supporters, it's 80 extra damage. So playing loose mean just turns into 80 more damage. The real question is, are you going to want to discard enough cards to make this worthwhile? And the real answer is, uh, if you're against an evolving basic, whether it's something like an Inke or whether it's something like a Grubbin or whatever it might be, you discard two, 80 damage, you're fine. Against non-GXs, though, we still end up in this really annoying 120-130 dichotomy. Because free supporters discarded is 120, but you got stuff like Boswell, stuff like Granbull, etc. Which have 130, so you need a fourth one discarded, and that's really awkward. Against GXs, generally four discarded won't be enough, although it will be for Dedene, who's got 160. Also, incidentally, Marshadow, which is seeing a little bit of play as a tech in Malamar deck, so it is worth pointing out until you realise it's going to rotate. I just wanted to point out the only other GX that was in range of this. And then if you're discarding five supporters, then you're getting a lot of GXs. Think things like Rayquaza, for instance. That's cool. But if you're against something like Pikachu and Zekrom, for instance... You need six supporters discarded. Six fours are 240. Cool. I know six fours are 24, but you know what I mean. But let's say you're up against something like a Celebi and Venusaur. You need seven supporters in your hand. Discard them all, 280. And we've got Lusamine and we've got Palpad, but then that, that's largely it. It might get awkward. You might not be able to recover enough supporters. Having said that, if you're discarding seven, you're taking three prizes. You only need to do that twice. So if you play a few power pads, you'll be fine. Can you get enough supporters in your deck to make this consistent and then recover them? Maybe. And if you can, this is really, really cool. Because there are just other really fun things you can do here. Play a Green's Exploration... Search for two supporter cards, that's 80 damage. The new Mewtwo, when you play it, puts a supporter card from your discard pile on top of your deck, and as long as you can find a way to draw a single card, it goes into your hand, and there's an extra 40 damage. And there are plenty of ways we can get the supporters and stack the deck in our favour and all of that. It's a really fun attack, but I don't know how often it will work. Now, if you're feeling lucky, we've got a GX attack here that might be for you. Two water energy, 10 damage. Flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 100 more damage. And in theory, we've got Victini to reflip it, but by the time this comes out in Unified Minds, Victini will have rotated. So you've got a 50 50 chance of using a GX attack to do 10 damage. Kind of like if you had a Magic Harp and Waylord and you use a GX attack to only hit the active, which is possible, I suppose. It's not terribly inspiring, it's an if you're desperate attack. But if you've got six additional water energy, and it does have to be water energy, then you flip ten coins and do an extra hundred for each number of heads. Now, the most number of heads you will ever need to flip 
is free to take down a Magikarp. And Waylord, you're flipping 10. You have to get spectacularly unlucky to hit 8 out of 10 tails. And look, it will happen sometimes. Statistics say that sometimes this will happen, but it won't happen all that much. Now, the other way to look at it is, it's 8 water energy. 8 water energy is a lot. It is, in fact, the exact same amount as Magikarp and Waylord that does 10 to the active and 100 to each of your opponent's bench. Depends what matchup you're playing as to which is better. If your opponent's got loads of weak Pokemon on the bench, Magikarp and Waylord's aces. If they've got one big giant Pokemon in the active, Slowpoke and Psyduck is your boy. So the good news is, like so many GX attacks before it, this should get you a one-hit KO on literally anything you want. The downside is 7 energy. 7 energy is a lot, ladies and gentlemen. 7 energy is a lot. Now, I did mention Naganadal and Quagsire earlier. Naganadal accelerates an energy to itself once per turn. Quagsire can move it all to the active. So this will help. This will help very much indeed. We have lost Aqua Patch, as I mentioned, which sucks. But eventually, unless your opponent's just taking prize after prize after prize after prize, you should be all right eventually getting the energy on there. But I don't know how good this card actually is. The 250 HP is way higher than it should be. The first attack is kind of cool, because you can hit essentially any number you want and take out little Pokemon for little resources, few resources, or big Pokemon for big resources, many resources. But the fact of the matter is, you're going to have a whole bunch of supporters, then have them in your hand, then probably end up recovering them, and that gets awkward. And the GX attack gets really good, but for 7 energy... That's kind of awkward. And when I say it will KO anyone, I mean anyone other than someone like Keldeo, for instance, which will block it because it's a GX Pokemon. Or Vileplume, though that is rotating, so it will have to be an expanded, because it's a basic Pokemon. I'm still giving this card four Wossies because I absolutely love how dumb it is. And I've, I've given it a bit of a boost because of it, and I don't even care. It's a really fun card, and I do think people will make a good deck with it. With Naganadal and Quagsire for the GX attack, and the ability to just play a ton of supporters. And look, the, the attack's only for two water energy. It's not terribly expensive. I think there is a lot to like about this, and I think it's very fun indeed. But I'd like to know what you think about it, so please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Wasi Plays, where we talk about games that don't have Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.